Hi everyone, Quiveen here from CIT's Blackrock Castle Observatory. Happy Dark Sky Week! I hope at least a few of you are enjoying a sky as dark and perfect as the one I'm showing here. We're taking a look into the morning sky with absolutely no light pollution but I will be increasing the light pollution during this video to give an idea of how a sky like this compares to a sky like ours in Cork City and skies in more light polluted cities around the world as well. So I hope you stick around to the end of the video to see all of that. If you are enjoying our videos, then make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon next to it to make sure you get all of the most up-to-date notifications. We're looking into the southern sky here very early in the morning, just about half past four. Of course, you'll have to go into the middle of the countryside and get up at half past four to see a sky as perfect as this one. So don't worry, I'm going to show you here. A little bit to the west of south, we've got that nice orange star Antares, the center of the constellation Scorpius, and a little to the east of south, we have that teapot shape of Sagittarius. So those two constellations will be down in the south. You will see the shape of those constellations at half four, even in a city like Cork. But we mainly want to take a look at this lovely glow stretching across the sky here. This is the glow of our galaxy, the Milky Way. And in a truly dark sky, it's perfectly visible at this time in the morning. We've even started to get a little bit of sunlight glow over there in the northeast, but the glow of the Milky Way still dominates the sky especially in the south and this is because the center of our Milky Way is towards the south so we'll see a lot more stars in that area the arms of our galaxy are thinner than the center so we see fewer stars and less of a glow as we come back towards the north here this does change at different times of the year as we move around the Sun but at the moment the center is definitely towards the south in the morning this is a perfect sky without any light pollution so there's many many stars visible there are places in Ireland where you can see a sky like this, such as Carrasyveen in County Kerry, the Ballycroy Wetlands in County Mayo. If you are travelling to or watching from another country, take a look at the International Dark Sky Association website, IDA.org. They track all of the official dark skies, but if you find a place where this lovely glow is visible with this many stars, you may have found an unofficial dark sky. So if you do come from an area where the sky is this perfect, let us know, message the International Dark Sky Association, talk to people who are involved with the dark skies in Kerry and Mayo and other parts of the world, and they may be able to help you get recognition if your sky is this dark. Now, this is a perfectly dark sky. Many of us would have to travel very far from our homes to see a sky like this one, but even a sky just a little bit better then what we see here in Cork City affords you a view of the plough. This is visible just outside many villages around Ireland and this is very, very promising. We can definitely see a faint glow of the Milky Way stretching across the sky here. This means if we can reduce the light pollution in Cork City by just a bit, if we can tone down our light pollution just a couple of steps, we'll be able to see the glow of the Milky Way from our homes. Luckily, those of us who enjoy the great outdoors, we can go out into the countryside, we can go camping and see these lovely views. But of course, many of us prefer to stay at home or stay where they're more comfortable. Luckily, beautiful dark skies like this we don't necessarily have to go to them. If we're careful with the amount of light that we have in Cork City, if we reduce the amount of light we have in cities, we can bring these dark skies back home. In the past, before the amount of light pollution we had today, the glow of the Milky Way was visible in cities all over the world. But today, only a third of the human race lives in an area with little enough light pollution for that glow to be easily visible. That's something we can work on. We can reduce the level of light in Cork City. If I bring us back to the kind of sky that's visible here in Cork, we'll still see a lot of interesting and famous things. We can still see that lovely shape of Scorpius with the bright Antares. We can see Jupiter, Saturn and Mars, those lovely planets. We can still see plenty of bright objects. Uh, the Summer Triangle, for example, with, Deneb, with Vega, Deneb and Altair, that's nice and high in the sky. But the glow of the Milky Way is gone. Many of the fainter shapes in the sky have simply disappeared. And I'm sure many of us are familiar with this sky if we're living in Cork or other large cities. So this is only a little bit worse than what you'd see in many larger towns, 
but of course it can get worse again. If you have more lights than Cork City, even a little more, then it causes many stars to disappear from the sky. The shape of Sagittarius, that teapot shape, is now practically invisible. Most of Scorpius has gone from our view, and this is a sky that's only a little bit worse than Cork City. We're pretty much missing part of the plough, the North Star is after getting quite faint, and we're missing part of Cassiopeia. So it's very hard to see the full shape of any constellations in a sky with this much light light pollution and this is only a little more light pollution than Cork and this is why we need to be so careful to make sure light pollution doesn't increase. We've already lost the Milky Way in cities like Cork. We can bring it back but if we're not careful we will lose more and more. So bringing up that light pollution to an incredibly light polluted sky, this is about as bad as it gets. Sagittarius is gone, we can just about see Antares. If we turn back around to the north, we'll see that the plough or the Big Dipper has practically disappeared from our sky as well. It's very tough to spot the shape of the plough or the Big Dipper. It's very tough to even spot the North Star in skies with this degree of light pollution. We can still just about see Saturn, Jupiter and Mars. Mars is pretty tough to see. And remember, this is still just half four. This is before the glow of the sun starts to interfere. If we bring our sky up to about five o'clock, Mars and Saturn are just about visible, so is Jupiter, but Sagittarius has completely disappeared. Only the bright star Antares is visible in Scorpius. This kind of sky is very early in the morning. Only a little bit of the sunlight glow has come through, but we're already after losing the vast majority of the stars. The summer triangle is still visible, but even that might be tough to spot in skies that are this light polluted. Now the sun is after rising, so comparing this to our sky at half four wouldn't be entirely fair. So let's bring ourselves back to Cork City and we can see a lot more stars. So Cork City is definitely better than the very light polluted areas around the world, but even with a glow of sunlight coming into the sky, areas with no light pollution are still far, far better. We're no longer seeing the glow of the Milky Way, the sun is after rising too much for that, but the shape of Sagittarius is very clear, Scorpius is very clear, and the sky is still certainly full of stars, and it stays reasonably full of stars, even as we come closer and closer to sunrise. So here we are at about half past five in an incredibly dark sky. The shape of Sagittarius and Scorpius are still clear. We still have Cassiopeia and the plough, Let's start bringing that back to Cork City now that we've come to half five. There we go. There's Cork City. The plough practically disappeared. The summer triangle barely visible. And low there in the south, we've only got the bright star and Taurus. Sagittarius has completely disappeared. Bringing it all the way back to the most light polluted skies. And there's almost nothing. We can just about see Vega there. And Altair, maybe Deneb if you look closely. Antares is gone, Mars is gone, Saturn's gone, Jupiter is barely visible. So this means if you're in a very light polluted area, it's even harder to see the planets. You have to get up much earlier if they're there in the evening. Whereas a city like Cork, which has less light pollution, they're a little bit easier to see. You don't have to get up as early, but in a place with very little light pollution, you wouldn't have to get up very early at all. In fact, let's see what the sky looks like in an area with no no light pollution if we push it all the way to six o'clock. There we go, coming up on six o'clock and we've still got Jupiter. In an incredibly clear sky without any lights from the city, we've still just about got Jupiter at six o'clock. In a city like Cork, it's barely visible at all. There's almost nothing left by six o'clock. So reducing the amount of light pollution, not only does it improve how much we can see in the sky, but it improves when we can see it in the sky. So I hope this has given you all plenty of reasons to fight back against light pollution, and I hope you'll join me for our future videos as well.